Make sure to subscribe today and make sure you like and make sure you leave your comments and ideas. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أحمده وأصلي على رسول الكريم أما بعد. So today, inshallah, um, I want to talk about uh, adhkar and dhikr and how to do it. I think many people really don't have the proper experience and know-how of how to do adhkar in a way that is effective. So inshallah ta'ala, today I will be explaining how to do adhkar in a way that is more effective and really begins to affect your thinking, your personality, your character, and the uh, effect of it um, will be greater and better, inshallah. So let me start with subhanallah. And by giving these examples, which I will do the following for us, Inshallah here. So I'll talk about Subhanallah. I'll talk about Alhamdulillah. Allah, Allahu Akbar. I'll talk about La ilaha illallah, if I remember. And then Allahumma salli ala Muhammad, the durood. I'll talk about that. What, how to do it properly. And then uh, also reading Quran and Salah. So these seven I'm going to give as an example and give you the training, you can say, that you can start using in how to do adhkar in a way that is more powerful, more effective, and more, inshallah, more fruitful. So there are three things required in all of these cases. Okay, One thing that is required is that you have to know the meaning to, be effect to make it effective. If you know what you're saying, obviously it has a different impact upon your heart because your heart needs to understand, right? And if your heart understands what's being said, then it has an effect upon the heart. Number two is association. And this is the part where really a lot of people are just missing. And I'm going to tell you what I mean by that. And number three is uh, the making of it into adat or making, making it habitual. Or it just, you've said it so many times that it's really like in, uh, become so easy to say and it's just become part of you and this is one of the meanings of adhkar is reminding you keep repeating you keep repeating you keep repeating okay so let's take for example subhanallah subhanallah means allah is perfect allah is absolutely perfect now what are the associations of that you can look at particularly sutul nahal Surah Al-Rum, Surah Al-Waqi'ah, Surah Al-Rahman, these surahs particularly talk about, now, subhanallah is in reference to Allah's creation. Allah is perfect, you look at a beautiful flower, you say subhanallah, right? So subhanallah is in reference to, generally speaking, Allah's creation. So when you're saying subhanallah, 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 you're saying it, but in your mind you're associating that not just with its meaning, which is Allah is perfect, Allah is perfect, Allah is perfect, but you're also associate, associating that with, look at how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created the heavens and the earth, how Allah has created the black holes, how Allah has created the atom, everything Allah has created is perfect, right? Allah has created the... مختلف الألوان like uh, fruits uh, Allah has given so many different colors all these colors you see with your eyes it's perfect right um, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created the rivers the oceans the mountains all the things Quran talks about so when you're associate when you're thinking of the word subhanallah you're not thinking of just its meaning Allah is perfect but you're also thinking of its association which is the part that sometimes so subhanallah 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 if I'm saying it, I'm thinking about the things specifically the Qur'an mentions, the Hadith mentions, the Sunnah of the Prophet mentions, in terms of Allah's creation, right? And then it could also relate to my experience, depending upon the situation, but mostly what Qur'an mentioned in terms of Allah's creation, what are signs to us? Like Allah has given us signs. The response to those signs is that Allah is perfect, that Allah is subhanallah. 
You find this, for example, just as a reference, I'm saying this, you find this as an example in Sutul Al Imran. Inna fi khalqi samawati wal ardi wa akhtilaf al layli wal nahar la ayati li ulil albab. Indeed, in the creation of the heavens and the earth, and the alteration of the day and the night, there are signs for the people who have understanding. Then the next ayah, الَّذِينَ يَذْكُرُونَ اللَّهَ قِيَامًا وَقْعُودًا وَعَلَىٰ جُنُوبِهِمْ يَتَفَكَّرُونَ فِي خَلْكِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ رَبَّنَا مَا خَلَقْتِ سُبْحَانَكَ رَبَّنَا لَا يَتَفَكَّرُونَ فِي خَلْكِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ رَبَّنَا مَا خَلَقْتَ هَذَا بَاطِلَ سُبْحَانَكَ فَقِنَا عَذَابِ النَّارِ those who standing, sitting, and laying down remember Allah because of their reflection about the signs of Allah. And all these signs of Allah, they point to what? الَّذِينَ يَذْكُرُونَ اللَّهَ قِيَامًا وَقْعُودًا وَعَلَىٰ جُنُوبِهِمْ وَيَتَفَكَّرُونَ فِي خَلْكِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ And they ponder over the heavens and the earth. In what sense do they ponder? For science? To see how I can get to the moon? No. They ponder over the heavens and the earth from the perspective of looking at all these signs and then saying, Allah is perfect. SubhanAllah. So there is the meaning, Allah is perfect. Then there's the association. So when you're saying subhanallah, 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 you're thinking about the things Allah has created, the signs Allah has given you, that they are a manifestation of Allah's perfection. And so you're saying, when you're saying subhanallah, you're thinking of these ayat, these signs that are a manifestation of Allah's perfection. Okay. Then second, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah is not just praise, it's not just gratitude, but it is the extreme sense of both. Someone has given you so many favors. If you count the ni'mas of Allah, you can't phantom it, you cannot count it, you can't understand it, you cannot enumerate it, you can't encompass it, you can't comprehend it. So many favors of Allah. So when you're saying, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah means that Allah has done so many favors that I'm so thankful and I'm so grateful and I just want to sing His praises. I want to just worship Him. I just want to thank Him, right? So this is the meaning of it. But the association should be in your own life. What has Allah given you? Alhamdulillah ala ni'mat al-Islam. Alhamdulillah for the ni'mah of Islam. Right? Alhamdulillah ala Right? Alhamdulillah for what? That he is the one who uh, yashfini. He is the one who gives me cure after I'm sick. Wa yut'imuni. And he's the one who gives me food. Wa yaskini. And he's the one who gives me drink. So alhamdulillah is not, I'm so thankful that Allah has made me, created me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given me food. Allah has given me drink. Allah has given me cure after um, oh, another dhikr I want to talk about is Astaghfirullah. That's another one that's uh, because that'll be interesting too. So I'll talk about eight, inshallah. So you have the meaning, like Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, and then the association with it. In the case of Subhanallah, it is the creation of Allah. In the case of Alhamdulillah, it is the favors Allah has done to you. So you just eat your food and you say Alhamdulillah. Not just as a habit, but as actually realizing. Realizing that what that Alhamdulillah Allah gave me this food. I could have been in somebody else's place who's in a much worse situation. Right? So Alhamdulillah. So then you have Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar in meaning is Allah is greater. Greater than what? You name it. He's greater than it. Greater than my ego. Greater than and then the specific meaning, and here I'm talking about the meaning of Allahu Akbar is what Quran calls وَيَكْفُرْ بِالطَّاغُوتِ Doing kufr of ta'ud. All the rebellious forces against Allah, you are saying to it Allahu Akbar. Because the word Akbar means something to manifest itself. Shaykhun Kabir, for example, Sutul Yusuf mentions this word, Shaykhun Kabir. Kabir means, in this sense, something that begins to manifest its so Allah, you're saying, Allah, no, I am manifest. I want to declare that Allah is the greatest. Not these forces that play God, and not the forces of shaitan, not the forces of Fir'aun, not the forces that are out there, not the forces of Dajjal. Allahu Akbar. 
Allah is the greatest. He is the one who is actually in control. And he is the one who I believe in. And he is the one who I repent to. And I do kufr of taghut. So Allahu Akbar, Allah is the greatest. Allah is the greatest. Right? So when you're saying Allahu Akbar, what's the association there? The association is you're thinking of all the negative forces that claim to be God. That claim to be in the place of God and that are rebellious against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that are in rebellion to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you're saying Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. You're saying you're saying Allahu Akbar. The Jal will claim to be God? No, Allahu Akbar. Someone else will be claiming to play God or be God? No, Allahu Akbar. Okay? This is the meaning there. So there is the meaning and then the association. And then after that, the third part that I've touched upon is that you repeat it so much times that it becomes easy for you to say and repeat over and over again so that you can keep and you get into this habit of this kind of like deep thinking and it's not just thinking actually because it's actually deep uh, remembrance and deep pondering so subhanallah alhamdulillah allahu akbar la ilaha illallah there's no power there's no authority there's no uh, divine other than Allah. So there's only one reality in the end of the day, and that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? So, la ilaha illallah. Again, you can think of that as a negation. La ilaha illallah, right? A negation. There's, there's no God. All these gods everyone's worshipping, right? All these idols everyone's worshipping. Uh, anyone who's worshipping their ego, right? Allah says in Quran, have you seen the one who's taken his own soul, his own ego as his God? Right? Or the money, right? The Prophet said, uh, destroyed is the Abdul Dinar and Abdul Dirham. The one who worships money is destroyed. He's so La ilaha illallah. There is no power, there is no authority. Ilah means authority because what Fir'aun said, what? I don't know of any God but me. So you're saying this and you understand the meaning, but then you're bringing and recalling to your mind the actual associations with that word, right? So you have subhanallah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah. Now let's do astaghfirullah. Astaghfirullah is you're saying astaghfirullah, I seek. Ghafr means to cover. Okay, ista means to seek, like istikhara. Khar means to choose. Ista, seek to what you want to choose, istikhara. So istighfar means to seek something that will cover your sins okay and we will cover their sins Allah says so this is what you're seeking I'm seeking for Allah to cover my sins forgive me cover my sins okay if Allah forgives you means he's covered your sins okay that he even though did it but now he's covered it he's erased it he's removed it all of these meanings can be there Ghafr was also used in the Arabic language for you know when someone would like for example wear a helmet that if somebody hits with a sword, it doesn't penetrate, it protects you. So this meaning is there too. Anyway, so the point I'm trying to make is, you're saying astaghfirullah. Now, a lot of times people tell me, I say astaghfirullah, but I can't think of my sins. And I, the response to that is, that it, then you should seek Allah's forgiveness that you can't even see your sins. Right? Astaghfirullah of your astaghfirullah you don't even because the ni'mah of Allah is the mercy of Allah is you see your sins and you see your sins and you feel and, and what does it mean it means you don't feel shame you didn't feel shameful when you missed a prayer or you didn't when you didn't do something properly or you prayed too fast or you didn't sit um maybe make your dua properly to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so it's very important that um when you're doing astaghfirullah, you're not only thinking of the meaning of the word astaghfirullah, but then you're also thinking of the association of your own sins, right? You're remembering your sins and feeling nidama, guilty over it. In the same way, when you're doing uh, the tasbih of Allahumma salli ala Muhammad, it's, it's understanding the meaning is important, but also understanding and remembering and focusing on the favor that this Prophet has come to you with, which Quran mentions many times, right? That a messenger has come to you from your own selves, right? And then Azizun Alaikum, Raufur Rahim, he's Raufur Rahim. He's come with this message of Islam, right? He's the one who taught you about this Islam. So how much do you owe him for for him bringing Islam to you and your forefathers? Uh, so you're 
doing dua for that person who brought Islam to the whole world. And so you have to remember this favor as you're doing Allahumma salli ala. It's not just I'm sending blessings, but you have to feel that the, who is this person that I'm doing this towards, right? Which is the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then uh, in salah, right? In salah, the same thing. Uh, salah, again, you have to know the meaning and then the association. Why are you in Qiyam? Why are you in Ruku? Why are you in Sujood? I'm not going to talk about that today. But these are symbolic gestures or movements. Sujood has a certain meaning. When you're in Sujood, you should remember who you are doing Sujood to. When you're in Ruku, you know, your heart is lower in Ruku than your mind, right? And so when you're in Ruku, you're surrendering your heart. Surrendering your heart is harder. This is why Raku is sometimes harder than doing sujood. Surrendering your mind, I, I surrender my mind to Allah is easy. If you have no doubts that Allah exists, it's easy. So, uh, you know, the mind has to be free of... Uh, if surrendering the mind means that there's no doubt and that you surrender to Allah in terms of your mind. But the heart, heart is a difficult thing. So when you go into sujood, you surrender your 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 head is the one that's on the, so your mind is given to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Nurku, it's your heart. So having like some association with what you are doing, the movements of the prayer, the meaning of the words, right? You're saying subhanahu rabbi ala, subhanahu rabbi ala, the same thing there. Now when it comes to Quran, the same thing. It's, it's, you're reading the Quran to internalize Quran and you're internalizing. And I'm not going to go into actually too much of Quran right now because I've already spoken a little bit too much than I was thinking. So I will talk about Quran next time, but the same idea is there. You have to understand the meaning and then you have to understand how does this relate to me? How does this, what is its association to me? How does this affect me? What does this say about me? Right? And so like if you're reading Verses of Jannah, you're doing du'a for Jannah. If you're reading verses about Jahannam, the hellfire, you're doing, you're asking Allah's refuge from the hellfire. This process of understanding the meaning and then having a mental association with Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, Allah Akbar, La ilaha illallah, La hawla wa la quwata illa billah is another one, right? There can be no, there's no power or no trying, uh, there's no hal or any quwa or power without. Uh, except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you're, you're, when you say, you're not only remembering its meanings, but you're also remembering that what is that good deed that you want to do? What is that bad deed you want to stay away from? For example, in salah, when the adhan is given, right? The adhan is given for salah. When you say, you have to, you're being called for prayer. You can't do it except if Allah wills. So you're saying la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. al same thing. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to understand the meaning and the associations and then to repeat this so much that it becomes a process that we're always doing, an experience we're having. And when you do this, it becomes an experience. And uh, so I'll just stop here for now, inshallah. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. So Bismillah rahman rahim I wanted to do finish off with an actual exercise and then in the comment section you can tell me how you felt about doing this exercise. So we're going to apply uh, what I talked about. So let's start with the one that I talked most about which is Subhanallah, right? Subhanallah meaning Allah is perfect and the association is look at His creation, it's perfect. So now I want you to, for example, you know, just to be able to concentrate uh, say subhanallah 10 times and you can close your eyes or not close your eyes there's no difference uh, but the idea is to be able to focus and to concentrate and to have a deeper realization so like you say subhanallah 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 now you're bringing the meaning he's perfect but you're also thinking of the things that represent that perfection in your mind in your experience right like look at the vastness of the universe look at like from one tree how there's so many fruits and one fruit is in the same tree from the same water that has been going to that tree. <laughs> one fruit is bitter, the other is sweet. Like subhanAllah, right? Um, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made beautiful animals. Beautiful, there, there are animals in the, in the water that illuminate, that have luminance. Um, so think, say, for example, say subhanAllah ten times and then think of doing association.
Now you'll notice this is hard the first time, so you have to kind of like repeat this over and over again. But I want you to do this exercise and then in the comment section tell me how you feel about it and if you um, uh, understood uh, the power of doing adhkar in this way uh, to be, bring it as internalize that reality of tawhid because the prophet said wahidullah make allah one right so what is what are these kalimats like subhanallah alhamdulillah allahu akbar la ilaha illallah la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah these are most of these are all summaries of tawhid the summary of allah's oneness and then they've been broken down to these different facets different aspects subhanallah is one aspect alhamdulillah you are so much in appreciation of the one you love that you're like alhamdulillah right it's a different facet right and uh all these are different facets of that one tawhid of allah and so now you're but then not only you break it down into different facets like subhanallah alhamdulillah allahu akbar la ilaha illallah allahu akbar again being the rejection of taghut the rejection of all forces that for everything from your ego to the forces of shayateen that rebel against allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so you bring all these associations and then you bring all these facets and all these uh, terms together and the associations with them now your understanding of deeper at a more organic level uh, happens the, and the realization so as soon as you see something you see as soon as you see nature for example you automatically are saying subhanallah to yourself at a much deeper level because you're not you're you have you now realize you have something else to so to make an association you see something new a beautiful sight you've never seen before now you see that and now you you automatically associate that with subhanallah and the next time you're saying subhanallah you'll remember that scene so this is why uh the because just bringing the meaning and association is not an easy process you have to do it over and over again and so if you go ahead and do like subhanallah 10 times and Allahu Akbar 10 times I mean Alhamdulillah 10 times Allahu Akbar 10 times just as a starting point and think of doing associations with that then leave me in the comment section uh, what you thought of this exercise and um, that inshallah ta'ala in the future you also plan to use this method so Jazakumullah uh, Khairan please do subscribe thank you and like and uh, like and subscribe and leave your comments and share any other thoughts that would help you to internalize uh, these basic summaries and gists of Tawheed uh, that the, that Islam has given us, like Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar, so on and so forth. Anyway, Jazakumullah Khairan. Assalamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh. Make sure to subscribe today and make sure you like and make sure you leave your comments and ideas. Jazakumullah Khairan. Assalamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Hello, Allah.